Pastor Amber Sueza, what can I say about her other than she's the strongest woman that I know. She emulates this in her bold faith, in her steadfast, just she doesn't back down on anything. And, you know, she's tiny, but she's like the mightiest person that I have ever met. And in all the years I've known her, she has just taught me so much. So I know that whatever she's going to speak tonight, it's going to be amazing. And I cannot wait. So let's welcome up Amber Sueza to the stage. Hi, guys. Hi. I'm pumped to be here tonight. Here's my assistant, Kim. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking for the last month, like, what could I possibly say to a big group of women? And I was just really racking my brain, but I'm super excited for what I have to say tonight. It's something that I have never taught before, never written a message about, but it's something that I think is practical for everybody. And I hope that it's helpful for everybody. And something you should know about me, I never give a speech or talk about anything to a group of people if it didn't impact and transform my life in some way because I believe it needs to be real. It needs to be practical and helpful. Something else you should know about me is I turn 40 this year. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because because I remember being in my teens and my 20s and thinking like 40 is so old. And now that I'm here, I'm like, no, 40 is just getting started. Like I'm just, life is just going. Let's get it going. Yeah, I'm pumped. Um, I have a friend who's 20 years older than me and she actually counts down her years. So she counts down her years by counting down how many Christmases that she thinks she has left. I know it's really dark. So she'll call me up around Christmas and she's like, only 15 or 20 Christmases left, Amber. And I like to mess with her a little bit and I'm like, you don't know that. This could be your very last Christmas. <laughs> like, you don't know. I like to measure my years and experiences and accomplishments. So I set some goals for myself for before I turn 40. I think a lot of us do that. Before I turn 30, I want to do this. Before I turn 40. So I have a list of goals. Do you want to hear them? Yes. Okay, so number one, I want to fly in a hot air balloon. I know. And this one is actually helping me conquer a fear. I actually, I'm afraid of um, heights. And... Uh, I, you might not know that because I post lots of mountain pictures and summits and stuff like that, but believe me, if you see me on a mountain summit or you see me zip lining, my legs are like shaking the entire time. I'm freaking out in my head. My husband, like when we go down the mountain, I'm hanging on to the backpack of my husband the entire time. Like it, it really does get in my head, but it's me conquering that fear. I've put my husband in charge of planning this balloon um, expedition so that I don't overthink it. But this goal really is set to help me overcome a fear. So number two is to get back to my wedding weight. I've been married for 19 years almost. And to be honest, I've been working on this all year, but I'm excited to tell you that I'm like a few pounds away from this goal. I know, I feel really accomplished right now. Believe me, when I hit this goal, I'm going to put my wedding dress on. I'm going to walk around downtown. My husband's going to take a camera. And then when people come up to me and they're like, congratulations, I'm going to say, thank you. It took me so long. I never thought this would happen. That's what I'm going to say. It's going to be really great. And then Number three, I want to be able to do the splits again. Yeah. And uh, I used to dance as a teenager. I used to teach dance as an adult. And this is just something I think would be really great to head into my 40s and be like, yeah, I can do the splits. But uh, if I'm really honest, this is not something that I have been diligent at working towards. I know what I need to do. Stretch. Every single day, I need to stretch. I need to be self-motivated and dedicated to do it. But if I'm honest, this is a goal that I have not put in the very front of my heart and mind. And then number four is to walk with integrity and surround myself with people of integrity. So yeah, it's a good one. And this is an ongoing goal that I've been working on for many years. This isn't just a new thing for this year. And I'm not going to throw it out the window when I hit 40. But um, integrity isn't something that happens overnight. 
nor is it something that you can obtain. Kind of like love isn't an emotion. Love is something that you choose to do. And integrity isn't something that you just obtain. It's something that you choose to work on. So when I say that word integrity, I don't mean like not lying, not cheating, not stealing. Those are all great things to avoid. But those are all things... Um, the, that we shouldn't have in our life, of course, and I think we all acknowledge that, but it goes much deeper than that. And I wanted to share some things with you tonight that I've worked on and I continue to work on for myself and characteristics of people that I like to surround myself with. Because how many of you guys know that the people we surround ourselves with, we become more like? Are you with me? So perhaps in your mind, integrity is being the same person in private that you are in public. Have you heard that before? Well, I want to take that a few steps um, further. Maybe write this down if you're taking notes. And I want to say that integrity is walking with intention and wisdom in what we say and do. Ultimately, I added integrity to my, integrity to my list of goals because I'm very aware of what I want to be known for. But also, I'm very aware of what I don't want to be known for. And there are a few things that I've learned along the way. And tonight, I'm going to be sharing a few tips from the book of Proverbs. So the book of Proverbs is known as the book of wisdom. And even if you've never read the Bible, you don't really read the Bible, you don't consider yourself a Christian, lots of people look to the book of wisdom for advice and help on having a more successful or fulfilling life. So my first proverb of the night is Proverbs 11.22. It says, like a gold ring and a pig's snout, is a beautiful woman without good sense. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that even mean? Basically, as women, we can have ourselves all put together. We can be in the best shape of our lives. Our makeup can be on point. Every curve can be hidden. But if we do not walk with integrity and wisdom, it's kind of pointless and kind of gross. In Proverbs 20, verse 7, it says, the righteous, that just means the morally upright, walk in integrity. Happy are the children that follow them. We walk in integrity, and it will be contagious to the people around us. There will be less drama in our life. Hello. Our work life will be smoother. We'll, ha we'll be happier in our work life. How many people need that? Um, we will also be passing down for the future generation an example to live by. So what is integrity really? Really, There are three thoughts, but again, I want you to understand that I'm not an expert in integrity. This is something I'm working on. This is something that everybody should be working on. But I want to share with you some of the things that I've been working on and maybe give you a few goals to work on for yourself. And I, I'll give you a few um, tips, but there's chances are that as I share these three things, that a couple of them are going to hit you kind of hard. They're going to feel a little rough around the edges, and then maybe one of them, you're like, oh, that one's pretty easy for me. But just know that going ahead, okay? So number one, integrity means being dependable. It's showing up for the friend when we say we're going to be there. It's finishing the thing that we started, it's being faithful to our spouse, to our family, to God. It's not giving up when it gets hard. I think somebody else needs to hear that again. It's not giving up when it gets hard. It's following through even when we don't feel like it. One of the best compliments that I've ever received in my entire life came from our assistant, Kim Roman. She doesn't even know this. But one day she just passingly said to me, Amber, you have the strongest follow through. And I was like, yes, girl. Thank you. That is one of my values. That's what I want to be known for. So maybe dependability is one of my strong ones. Maybe this one's easy for me. But maybe you have a hard time being dependable. Following through and being dependable doesn't have to be complicated, so don't overthink it. The Bible says in Matthew, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Be there for the things that you say yes to, 
And don't say yes if you can't be there. Learn how to use the word no. I think some people pleasers in the room need to hear that one again. Learn how to use the word no. And I want us to just all rally around each other just in case there are some people pleasers in the room. And let's just use that word in our vocabulary. Just say it with me, no. No. One more time, just for good measure. No. no. Don't be afraid to say it. Don't be afraid that it's really going to mess up that person's feelings. Because in fact, if you follow through with what you say yes to, and then when you say no, there's room. There's breathing room, right? Um, but, but don't just say yes and then not show up. That's really hard. When, uh, when we're hiring at Connect, Dependability is the number one thing that we look for. There are, in fact, people who have sent in resumes and they've had great qualifications, but there's other people who don't have as good of qualifications, but they get the job because we've seen them be dependable time and time again. Dependability matters. It matters everywhere you are, especially your workplace. Live by example on what it looks like to be dependable and work at it. And remember, it's an ongoing goal, not something you complete. Being dependable helps build character and integrity. Number two, integrity means speaking with honor. Have you ever walked up to a group of people and they say, hey, we were just talking about you. And then you kind of clench, you're like, oh, what are they saying about me? I've actually tried to change this a little bit um, in my head. I, I don't want to say, hey, we were just talking about you. Instead, I say, hey, I was just bragging about you. Because that changes things, right? That breaks down the wall. That proves that I haven't broken trust between us and this big group of people. And it actually builds up and honors somebody else. Women have enough self-doubt and we are telling ourselves enough negative things in our own head that we don't need to hear that said from somebody else around us, right? So I'm just going to throw this out there. Gossiping is the biggest enemy of integrity. Here's something you need to understand about gossiping. If they're going to do it with you, they're going to do it about you when you're not there. See, people use gossiping as a way to bond with other people. And if people are saying negative things, they're using gossip to build a bond with you. But hear me now. When you walk away and you're not there, they're going to trash you in order to build a bond with other people. And so when we really get this as a truth, because it is true, the people who gossip with you will gossip about you. When we understand that, and then we, when we make that real in our own heart and we make it a rule for us that I'm not going to gossip about somebody else, then that makes room, right? And that, that helps us to surround ourselves with other people who won't gossip about us. There are entire friendships and even marriages built around this type of bonding. And the moment that that person comes home and, uh, and doesn't have a juicy tidbit, there's something that's missing there in their bond. And all of a sudden, the relationship feels disconnected or a little off in that bond because the bond has been talk about, all about talking about other people. And so that bond with that relationship feels off. And it's because that bond has been built around something that's unhealthy. Ultimately, what we're looking for when we gossip is affirmation. Moments of gossip usually come about when we're shocked or disagree about something. We immediately try to find someone around us to say, yeah, that's crazy. But sometimes what we don't realize is we are manipulating and changing that person's who we are gossiping to's first impression or opinion about somebody else. So like if I met somebody here tonight and you told me something that I didn't necessarily agree with, or maybe I found it shocking. Then I went home and I told my husband, and then I went to our staff meeting and I told our entire staff, that's actually unfair to you because I'm sharing something about you and giving an unfair opinion to somebody you've excuse me, never met before. So that's really an unhealthy bond that I'm trying to make there. Proverbs has a lot to say about this. In chapter 20, verse 19, it says, A gossip reveals secrets, therefore do not associate with a babbler. That's what the book of wisdom says. Just straight up, don't hang out with them. That's the advice. 
In Proverbs 25, 9 and 10, it says, argue your case with your neighbor directly and do not disclose another's secrets or else someone who hears you will bring shame upon you and your ill repute will have no end. Well, that one's hard. You know, the easiest way to cut out gossiping is to make it a rule. If you wouldn't say it in front of them, then don't say it about them. If they aren't there to speak into anything that's being said about them, then it doesn't need to be said. And if we're questioning something that they did or said, don't look for affirmation from your neighbor that you're right. Go and follow up with them and say, hey, can we get on the same page about this? I'm looking for a little bit more clarity. There's no need to take it outside of the bubble, right? This one is hard. As women, we try and find that validation we feel like we need. And we do bond over the shock factor. I mean, that's why reality TV exists. But if you want to work on your own integrity and live as an example of it, we have to speak honor about one another, build one another up instead of tearing each other down for our own benefit. My last thought, integrity means owning it. Now, what is it? It is your mistakes. It's owning up to it when it's your fault and you say sorry. It's your feelings. It's owning those thoughts and feelings instead of blaming them on someone else or something else. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, the devil put that thought in my head. No, he didn't. No, he did not. No, it might have been something else, but you are giving way too much credit to somebody who does not have power over you and cannot plant thoughts into your head. But you might have seen that on social media or you might have seen it on Netflix, but I promise you the devil didn't put it there. You did. So own up to that. It's owning that sorry, even when you think you're right. So I have a friend in the US that I chat with, and she was sharing with me about a family vacation that she, she recently went on. And she took her whole family to Galveston, Texas. Now, if you were here a few weeks ago, you heard my husband say from stage that going to Galveston, Texas is kind of like going to Medicine Hat for vacation. Like it's nothing special. <laughs> it's nothing special, but there is a really brown water beach. And we know this because we spent our honeymoon there. So I'm speaking from experience. So when my friend tells me, yeah, we just got back from Galveston, I was like, Galveston? Why? I mean, that water is kind of gross. Why didn't, why didn't you go to like Florida or Alabama? And, um, you know, it was the same driving distance for her. So I didn't really think it mattered. But to my surprise, she took offense to this. And she took offense because she thought that I called her family vacation gross. So, okay, you guys, like, I'm still under the opinion that Galveston Beach is not the place that I would take my family on vacation. But I am not so prideful to dig my heels in and make my point instead of seeing that I offended my friend and saying I'm sorry. So own up to it. In Proverbs 16, 18, it says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. In Proverbs 27, 17, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Meaning that feedback is important and it makes us better. So if you're a person that when a boss or a coworker comes up to you with feedback or maybe a little correction, and then you bristle and you're constantly looking for the out, you're looking for the blame. If you're always saying something like, that's not what you taught me, or that's not what that person told me, or I saw them do it differently, then you're not owning up to it, right? Even if you are right, there's correction happening there. And, and so there's a process that's really helpful when you get into these situations and you're not quite sure how to handle them. So maybe you want to write this down. There's four things that you need to say so that you can own it. It's I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. If it's your boss, maybe I'm grateful. <laughs> Don't make it weird. <laughs> so I applied this to my friend and I said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you or make fun of your vacation. Please forgive me for it. Thank you for sharing your truth with me on how it made you feel. I love you and I would never want to hurt you. Own it. Some of these things that I've pointed out tonight might hit kind of hard, 
And I reminded you of that in the beginning. Just remember that I've said all along that integrity isn't something that you possess. It's something that you work towards. So just like if I want to be able to do the splits again someday, I need to stretch. And if we want to become better, more dependable, trustworthy people, we have to work at it and stretch our integrity muscles. It doesn't just happen overnight, but it does happen by choice and walking with intention and wisdom. And if you're someone who sees this list and you say, I am so far from the mark, I'm not walking in integrity at all, I want you to stop for a minute and give yourself a little bit of grace because nobody in this room has it down. We are all working on it, right? I'm up here working on it and I'm being honest about that. In fact, it's kind of the whole point of Christianity, if I'm honest. Like, we're all a big mess. Everybody makes mistakes. We all need help. But the beautiful thing about that is that through Jesus, we have grace for all of our mistakes. So in John 1, 9, it says, if we confess our sins, and that's just another word for mistakes, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So if you're wondering, how could I possibly have a relationship with God? I want to go back to those four things that I was talking about on how to own it. And if we're really looking for that fresh start with God, then lean into these four things. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And I love you. And when you're ready to bring it to God and ask for a fresh start, you can offer up a prayer that's something like this. I'm sorry, God, for the mistakes that I continue to make. Please forgive me for them. Thank you for sending me Jesus to take on all of my mistakes. I'm so grateful for every blessing, and I want to grow in a loving relationship with you. It's as simple as that. That's the beginning of a relationship with God. Friends, there is room for grace in our mistakes. It doesn't mean we stop trying. Hopefully tonight you're creating a list of some goals to walk more in integrity than ever. But it does mean that we don't have to carry the weight of all of those past mess ups. In Proverbs 21, 21, it says, whoever pursues, and notice here, it doesn't say obtains it. It says whoever pursues it, whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life and honor. So may you live a life filled with integrity and wisdom and honor. I'm going to bring up some women right now who I've actually seen walk in integrity. And when I listed earlier that integrity is not giving up when it gets hard, I have seen these women walk through things that are difficult and hard, and they've been walking in integrity with it. So I want you to hear from them. So we're actually going to do a little Q&A panel. So I'm going to pass it off to Shanna. Wow, I really regret that I left my notebook at home. <laughs> that was so good. Thank you. All right. So we are going to have a Q&A panel, as Amber discussed. And I'm going to need your help with this because... I only have one question, and we want to talk for a little longer than that. So if you scan the QR code behind me, that's going to take you back to Slido. So if you don't know how to do it, like open your camera, scan a QR code. Not everybody knows, so that's how you do it. And when we were doing the original questions, we were in the poll um, section of it. If you click on the Q&A tab, what that, what that will do is open up the question and answer portion of the night. So you can submit questions anonymously um, for any of our speakers who are coming up stage. Yeah, I don't know where they are. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got Aaron. <laughs> and we got Demi. And where's Karen? <laughs> All right, we have our panel. And so if you have questions relating to the theme of the night, which is integrity, wisdom, honor, those are the type of things that we want to be asking these ladies, all right? So I'm going to get started, and we'll start with the lovely lady on my right. So what is your name and something about you that others might relate to? Well, my name is Amber, if you didn't catch that one earlier. <laughs> um, something that you might be able to relate to. I know a lot about waiting. 
And that's because my husband and I have been walking through a 12-year process of infertility with everything that that goes with and all its emotions and highs and lows and jealousy and all that mess. So um, I understand what it's like to wait. And if that's something that you can relate to, I'm happy to answer and talk about it. All right, next. Uh, hi, I'm Erin. Um, something relatable about me, I guess I could also mirror what Amber just said. Um, my husband and I have also been walking through a season of infertility, but um, you can ask her the questions about that instead, <laughs> so I don't have to cry on stage. <laughs> um, and I, I would say something else that I think um, that you might relate to um, is what you said earlier about owning it and owning your mistakes and, and owning your thoughts, I think was something that really stood out to me. Um, because as, uh, a divorced woman who is now remarried, um, as my husband can also attest to, um, I didn't, at first I was not very good at the whole owning my mistakes and owning my thoughts. Um, and I had a lot of thoughts and insecurities that came from um, my first marriage and why it ended, it ended due to infidelity. Um, and I took that out on my husband for a long time. I, I, um, I made him pay for those mistakes. I didn't own those. Um, so that's something that we also continually walk through. That was another thing that you said that really, I was like, oh, thank goodness, is that it's, this isn't something we achieve. It's something that is a... Uh, a process and you make progress every day. Um, cause I thought when you first asked me to do this, I thought, does she know, does she know <laughs> in my head? I'm not good at this integrity thing all the time, but, um, you get better every day. Yeah, so. that's right. Hi, I'm Dami. And one thing you might be able to relate to for me is I have, Live the life where, you know, things were okay and, you know, you pray for things to get better and then things get really good and you're like, yes, I've been waiting for this all my life. And then all of a sudden the rug gets pulled under your feet. Yeah. And then that's the real test. Yeah. You're there questioning every single thing, all the promises in the Bible, right. what is the benefits of being a Christian? And, you know, all of a sudden, things like God's got this, or it is well, or you'll be fine, doesn't mean anything. You know, things we just throw out there when life is great. When you're really going through the thicks of it, you have to, you begin to question everything. And when people tell you to trust in God, you have to understand the meaning of trusting in God. Like literally every morning you wake up and you're like, you know what, God just take control of today. Like, I can't do this without you. Mm -hmm. And that I'm here and I'm not crying. <laughs> it's God. Like, I, I, I truly understand the meaning of God being there for you. So for me, that's my story. And also what Pastor Amber said earlier, it's about integrity is not giving up when things get hard. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing to do will be to give up, would be to shut the world out, not go anywhere, just, you know, just have my own little pity party. And if I decided to do that, no one can blame me because I have every reason to. But yeah, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I can stand up and, you know, get on with life regardless and await my testimony. So yeah, that's me. That's good. Good evening, I'm Karen Bernardo, and I planned to write a good introduction for the whole week, never got to it. So, so as, I, as I was doing this blurb of introduction this afternoon, took me on a memory lane, got emotional. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll try to get hold of myself and be as emotionless as I could on this introduction. And I'm gonna go old school with you today. So I have a printout. So. <laughs> While we wait for a moment, if you're new to Slido, um, you'll see there's a little like thumbs up button next to the question. So if you read a question and it really resonates with you, give it a thumbs up and it'll up it in the poll to make sure that it gets answered. Thank you. Yes. So uh, a little bit of my heart today. So I wrote it down because I don't want to miss uh, some parts of it. So. 
I moved to Canada by myself in 2003 as a permanent resident. Coming from a poor family back home and being single then, my main, my main objective when I came here was to be successful in my career. But God knows what we need long before we even realize it. Work, it turned out for me, at that time became chaotic. Coupled by the isolation and loneliness, I was ready to pack my bag, turn my back, do whatever was needed, just to feel whole again. Okay, I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> sorry, just bear with me a second, sorry. God taught me a very important lesson then, that no amount of success in this world can fill the void that only God can fill. That's right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I have been through various seasons in my life, um, some happy ones, some not so much. Ooh, I shouldn't do this, I'm sorry. Uh, there was a point in my life when I wanted to know the reasons for the storm. But through time, um, God revealed to me that I did not need to know the reason. I just needed to trust him. I wanted to share um, this, that as introduction of myself to reach out to anyone in this room that may be going through difficult times right now and just to share a ray of hope that there is no amount of hurt, no amount of pain that God cannot heal. That's right. That's good. Uh, so, fast forward to the happy ending. It's not an ending yet, but uh, fast forward 20 years um, after landing in Canadian soil. I'm married for seven years now and still with the same husband, uh, Josh Bernardo, and we are blessed with two children, our seven-year-old Nathan and my almost three-year-old Emma, who gives us both so much joy and some sprinkles of gray hair. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So thank you all for helping me out. We do have questions and feel free to keep writing them. Now, I like things to be a little bit of a game. So rather than assign these questions to you, I'm going to read the question and the first person to mic up gets to answer it. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Sorry. I think I'm funny. Anyways. <laughs> you are funny. Tell my husband. Yeah. <laughs> All right, question number one. What is the best way to distance yourself from those who do not pursue integrity? <laughs> All right, go down. Okay. My answer might not be what you expect, but I wouldn't say to distance yourself from those who do not possess integrity. What I would say is what would Jesus do? Like in these situations, um, I know that if, if, you, if you think you are in a vulnerable position and you're trying to build up yourself, then maybe in the short term, yes, find a way. I know I'm not telling you the answer, but find a way to keep yourself away from those people. But when you've built yourself up, what we should be doing as Christians, in my opinion, is to help those people build their own integrity as well. Um, if we keep distancing ourselves and walking away from people who are not like us, then I don't believe we're doing what we're called to do on earth. That's good. I just want to add to that. Like, um, if we distance ourselves completely, then we have no influence with them, right? So I think communication is a really good thing. And you can even say, hey, I'm working on not gossiping. And I just want you to know that. And I, I just want to be honest. I feel like our relationship is very bonded around that. And I'd like to see that change. And maybe make them a part of that. Now, if there's other issues and bigger stuff, maybe don't hang out as often, but you still want to be a part of their life and an influence in their life. And hopefully at some point they start working on themselves too. But I think communication is a big part of that. And I'm going to add something in case more complex questions come in so you get to answer <laughs> it. <laughs> No, I, I just recall uh, Pastor Dan saying uh, a couple of weeks ago that people are not the problem. They are the price. Yeah. So it's not, uh, to what you said, it's not distancing yourselves from them, but building a relationship with them and influencing them in the best way you could. What would Jesus do? I love it. Okay, next question. What would you... Oh, hang on. 
Yeah. What do you do when you own a mistake and the other person doesn't forgive you? <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's okay if they don't forgive you, right? Because at the end of the day, actions have consequences. And if you've done something that's wrong, you've put your hand up. You're not putting your hand up because you want them to give you a um, get out of jail free card. You're putting your hand up because you're acknowledging that you've done something wrong. You are sorry for it. And the only thing you can do for that person to let them know you're genuinely sorry for what you've done is to give them the space to heal from what you've done. If you've done something bad, you saying sorry doesn't immediately fix what you've done. You need to give them time to process it and decide if they still want you in their lives or not. Now, I appreciate that in some cases, it can hurt losing a friend from a mistake that you've made, but just try to accept that the right thing to do is to apologize and give them time. If you really want that person in your life, pray about it. And I don't mean this in a cliche way, like take everything back to God. And eventually if they're supposed to be in your life, the friendship will be mended. Good. Uh, I'll just add to that. Yeah, do it. Just in case they get more complicated. And I, have to <laughs> um, I, I think also just keeping in mind that when you apologize and you own your mistake, that forgiveness shouldn't necessarily be your goal. Um, you know, writing your mistake should be your goal, but forgiveness is really um, more about the person who's giving the forgiveness. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody has ever heard this saying, like, not forgiving somebody is like trying to kill them by drinking poison yourself or something like that. When you forgive somebody for something they've done for done to you, the the impact is bigger in your own self um, versus for the other person. So if you're on the flip side of that, um, the forgiveness is totally in their control and it's more about what's going to um, make a change in their heart when they decide to forgive. So apologizing, owning your mistake, doing better the next time, changing your behavior, like I said, or like you said, the, you know, there's consequences to actions um, and walking through that without the goal being forgiveness, I think is also important. Awesome. All right. Next question. How do you focus your mind back on God when everything seems to be falling apart? I think that is the most critical time that you need to focus on God because when everything falls around you you only have one to go to I think it also um, comes it comes into play when you have relationships that are also founded in God so like this is the importance of church right like when everything else is falling around you you need that support from your Christian brothers and sisters to help hold you up. You need that. And, and that's why here at Connect, we offer Connect groups. So there's community that you can grow and you can build friendships that are natural. And then we also have like a team that we do life together. And so it's easy to create relationships outside of Sunday morning. So you don't have to be the one that's always going out in the lobby, like meeting people. There's easier ways to build relationships. And when you have those relationships, then you don't feel so alone and in the dark when everything feels like it's falling apart. And I'll add to that because two succinct examples come to mind. I might not go into too much detail. Well, the first one I remember was... Um, when we were trying to have a baby, our, our first kid, we had a miscarriage. And I remember at that time, I was just like broken. Like, why would this happen? We prayed for this, you know, everything, you know, just going back to those emotions, it was so bad. I remember walking into church on Sunday and I'm usually jumping and dancing and everything. And this day I was just like crying. And I eventually walked out of church. I never thought I would get to a place where I would ever do that. But thankfully, the only thing I can think of in terms of what brought me back, I only stayed out for one Sunday, but anyway, the only thing I can think of in terms of what brought me back was just like worship. And even with more recent um, situations in my life, like I'm driving home from the hospital and I'm literally like bawling and crying and screaming, but I am screaming in worship. Like I'm just playing the music in the car by myself and, you know, just singing through it. And I realized like after two weeks of, of doing that, when I, I didn't know what, what was going to be of me 
in that instance. But one thing I know happened for sure was after that, those two dreadful weeks, I found I was sleeping better. I found out I was literally trusting in God. Like every waking moment, I am a planner. I used to be someone that, you know what, I want to know what I'm doing next summer. Where are we going? Book the tickets. You know, do all of that. But now, <laughs> I don't even have the strength to think beyond a day, right? And then you remember what the Bible says, that his grace is sufficient for you for today. And, you know, things like if God cares about the lilies in, in the garden or whatever it says in the Bible, like... <laughs> Like, what, what more me, what more me and you? And, and those words just begin to mean a whole different thing entirely. They just become more palpable. Like, so if you're feeling down or you're strong, struggling to stay close to God, for me, it's worship. For some people, it's praying. For some, it's reading the Bible. Whatever is your favorite thing to do as a Christian, I would suggest that you just latch onto that as strongly as you can. Okay. Okay, we're going to do one final question because this one was pretty high voted as well. So how do you keep your integrity when a close family member keeps gossiping and you don't want to hurt that relationship? I think ultimately it's about that communication that we talked about earlier. So um, if they keep gossiping, there's nothing wrong with having that conversation. Now it's really hard to have that conversation, I get that. And I've experienced that. Um, sitting somebody down and be like, hey, you gossip a lot. Like, that's, that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a gentle way to do that. I would say go in with prayer before you have that conversation first. And then um, just be honest, because that's truly the only thing that we can do. We can pray for them and we can be honest with them. And then um, if it just continues to happen, like don't don't be mean about it, but you, you do have to distance a little bit there, right? You do have to find a way that that doesn't intrude in your life and in your growth. Um, but, but ultimately, start by care first. Care for that person. Love that person like Jesus would love that person. And go that route first, and then work your way through the process. Um, I'd like to add to that. Um, this is going to be real vulnerable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as somebody who is on the opposite side, because like I said, integrity is, it's been a process. I was not always um, a woman with integrity, um, but I would say embrace that awkward um, conversation. And like you said earlier, like even approaching it in a way that says like, I'm working on this for me. I don't want to gossip as much, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to invite you into that. And I say it's vulnerable because I have been that person. I have been the person where somebody said to me, hey, I don't want to gossip as much, so we might have to hang out less or something like that. And it, it was a sucky conversation. It was crappy to be told you're a gossip. Um, but I'm so thankful that that person embraced that awkward moment because it got me thinking and it got me wanting to change. Um, and also one thing that I didn't realize at the time that she was doing, she's explained it to me since then, um, is that she changed what we did as friends. So, um, we found that we would end up mostly gossiping um, if we went for a coffee date or if we went out for dinner. So instead it was like, let's go play a sport. Let's go to the movies. Let's go do an activity where there isn't really like the environment to get into that. Um, and so if you're somebody that's like, I want to hang out with my, fam my family member, but they gossip all the time, um, maybe just consider the type of activity that you're doing with them so that it's not... Um, inviting gossip into the environment, I guess. I think there's power in peer pressure. We've heard that before, right? Yeah. Like, you know, and that can go both ways. That can be good and bad. And and so there's nothing wrong with using a little bit of that peer pressure to help gear your friend or family member in the right direction um, just by communicating with them. But yeah, I th that was really good. Good tips. And you know how at the beginning I was like, hang out with your Christian friends more, even if you're not a Christian. I got to hang out with Aaron for the first time last month. And my takeaway, <laughs> well, like as a friend, like outside of church, and it was her and a couple girls. And my takeaway when I got home was literally, I said to my husband, 
it was so nice. These girls, none of them gossiped, which was so different from all of my other friendships that I have. So Aaron, like, <laughs> I, I bragged about you. I didn't talk about you. I bragged about you when I got home. <laughs> so we're all getting better. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, ladies, so, so much for your vulnerability, for answering so honestly. You should check out Slido. There's a lot of just, like, loving comments that came in for all of you. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> All right, well, that's it for this portion of the evening, um, but we are not kicking you out. <laughs> um, we still have lots of chocolate, we have lots of coffee. Uh, the merch store is gonna be open until 8.30. If you haven't made a bracelet yet, you should definitely do that. And you know, like, I really hope that you had a lot of fun tonight, that you're gonna continue to have fun. And I wanna let you know that we have just as much fun on Sunday mornings. Um, so I really hope that you're gonna come back this Sunday. It's gonna be Mother's Day, which means we'll have a photo booth. We're gonna have free necklaces for all the moms. So bring your mom with you. We also have a few other surprises up our sleeves. It's gonna be a great day. So make sure you come 9.30 or the 11 a.m. service. We would love to see you. And yeah, I'm just, I'm so, so grateful. I wanna thank you again that you all came tonight. and I just I wish you all an absolutely blessed evening and I'm just I'm going to be praying that we all can sleep after the amount of caffeine that's been consumed here so have a good night <laughs>